All right, guys, welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how I transform this image to that image. All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Philip. You can find me at Twitter at Let's Image. Now, let's jump right into Photoshop. And the first thing I did, obviously, because it was a black and white image, I converted the image to black and white. Okay? It means I desaturated everything. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to hit, as always, Command and J just to duplicate my layer. And for some reason, now my computer lets me do it. It's great. Now, either you would do a hue saturation adjustment layer and just bring down your saturation to something like that. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to hit Command, Shift, and U with that new layer. We're just going to do the same, but we can save one of the adjustment layers. And it's a way to keep it tidy if you feel like that's what you have to do. Now, the next thing I would like to do is I would like to make these clouds a bit more visible in the sky because they are kind of blown out in a moment. So I'm going to do a level adjustment right here. I'm going to just drag this slider a little bit into like a so. And I'm going to take this one as well and bring it in just a tiny bit, something like that. And I think that doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to close that again. And you see now I have affected the foreground as well. And I actually do not want to affect the foreground as well. So let's try to get rid of that adjustment in the foreground. And the simple way to do this is by hitting W on your keyboard, which brings up the quick selection tool right up here. You may as well click on it. And I'm just going to go over the beach or whatever that area down here is. Something like that. And I'm going to go into these stones here. Well, actually, kind of quite a bit of work to pile these ones up for, for real. It was kind of windy as well. Well, anyway, well, now we have that selected, okay? And with this selection, we can now make this part invisible where we don't want it to be seen, okay? So now we have black selected. I have, like, uh, and the, on the colors down here, I have the beach, including the stone, selected, and I have the adjustment layer selected. So what I can do, I can just hit Alt and Delete, which will fill the selection we have just done with black in that case okay and black is hiding an effect yeah? so everything which is black here will not have the effect visible so you see the sky is white and we have the effect in the sky so if we go and uh, deselect that we can actually see that the adjustment has now just happened in the background in the sky which is kind of nice and a little bit here which is completely fine because we can just take our brush tool hitting b and go here and just uh, whoop, let me just get up my opacity a bit and then uh, paint it out all right and that's all we have to do. Now you can see that something has not gone completely perfect because we had a quite sharp edge down here, but that shall, shall be no problems. What we can do is with that adjustment layer selected, okay, I'm going to e uh, decrease my brush size a tiny bit to something like that, decrease my, my opacity to 10% by hitting 1 on my keyboard, and I'm just going to clean that up a little bit by going back and forth with my pen or my mouse, or whatever you have, okay, and just make it a bit more smooth right here, okay. Every time I'm brushing, it's going to remove 10% of the effect, and that's what we want, because that is, the effect is what's creating this sharp edge right there. Now let's do a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Actually, I'm going to increase my opacity to 20%, because it's a bit faster, okay. I'm holding the space bar pressed, which then allows me to get my hand tool, and then I can move around the image. Kind of handy. Okay, nearly there, nearly there. Okay, something like that. That is not bad at all. Okay, let's just look at the before and the after, and that is just the sky. That's quite good. Now, so the next thing I want to do is I want to increase the contrast, right? So let's do a brightness and contrast adjustment. I'm just going to crank it up all the way up. Okay, all the way up, just like that. And now I obviously can decide if I want to have that effect just in the foreground or just in the background. But I think in this case, I'm actually going to keep it everywhere because it's, it's kind of neat. Yeah, I like it a lot. So what we're going to do next is we're going to bring down the darks in the foreground. And yeah, let's, let's play a bit with the black and white values. Okay, so I'm going to do another levels like we just did for the sky. And I'm going to bring that down here and that in to something like that. Okay, so I want to have like a sharp edge between the, the shadows here and the stone surface there. <laughs> and you can just do that by playing around with these things. So exciting! Okay, that's actually not bad, I like that. And again, now we have that in the sky as well. And obviously in the sky it made something, well, something horrible has happened. <laughs> so 
An easy way to get rid of that is by going back to our sky adjustment, okay? Our sky adjustment is down here. I click on it, okay? And I'm going to hold command and click it. And that's going to just do the same selection we had before, all right? Just exactly the same selection as we had before, at least theoretically. Now we go up to our old, yeah, sorry, our new um, adjustment, which we want to have for the foreground. And we're just going to hit Alt and Backspace. And that's going to do exactly the opposite. So now the, the sky is black on our layer mask right here, on our effect mask. And you can see if I toggle that on or off, the effect is just visible in the foreground. Okay. Now, obviously, that's actually quite a lot. So maybe it would have been a lot easier if we just would have selected a brush and painted it out. So in the end, I'm going to have to do that. Let's hit deselect, get our brush with by pressing B, make our brush nice and uh, large. Then I'm going to press 0, which gives me 100% opacity back. And I'm just going to have black selected and going to paint the effect out of the stones here, because that's actually not where I want them. Interestingly, my Photoshop has decided again once more to do the funny thing where black squares appear when I use my brush. Kind of, kind of weird. Okay, so now we have the effect really just in the foreground, as you can see right here. Okay, so that, that's not too bad. And the rest of the image is actually just cleaning up, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did there. So the first thing I'm going to do next, the first thing I'm going to do next, the thing I'm going to do next is I want to add some blur to certain points. Um, and I'm going to start, if Photoshop allows it, by going down here. So for example, this corner here, I don't need it this sharp. What I want to have sharp later are these stones you can see right here. Okay, so this, the, I want them sharp, of course, but uh, not, not now. As I mean, we don't have to do that right now. So right now we blur stuff first. Okay, so the way to do that is by creating a stamp visible. And I'm going to, what that means, I'm going to explain in a second. I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E. And you can see that everything which was visible on, that, on, the, on the image, in, a, in essence, is now visible on that new layer right here. Okay? And a way to blur, I'm just going to use a simple Gaussian blur. So you go to Blur. And before we actually do that, just to make sure that we get the right amount of blur, I'm just going to click on my layer with right click. And I'm going to convert it to... Where... Here, so convert to Smart Object. And that allows us that once we have applied the blur filter, we can always go back and uh, do it again if we don't like it. Okay, so I'm just going to go to Gaussian Blur right here. I'm going to choose an amount which we like, which is maybe something like that. Could work. Let's see. So now we have blurred everything. We don't want to blur everything. Let's just zoom in and go down to our corner, which we want to have a little less sharp, and toggle that on or off. And that's actually not bad. So I'm going to create a layer mask by clicking, clicking the little Japanese flag symbol for layer masks down here. And I'm going to hit Command and I to invert that layer mask. And now the layer mask is black, meaning that we are hiding all the effect. Okay, so nothing is blurred from the effect we have just done. So now I'm going to choose my brush by hitting B and choosing an opacity of about 40%. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller as well. And then I'm just going to start to draw the blurry effect in here with my usual Photoshop problems. And I still have no clue what the hell is that makes these black squares. So anywho, now I'm gonna blur these stones here a little bit as well. I don't need them that sharp. I want to have the attention more on those than on the ones in the back. So you can add some more blur right there. And maybe some more down here and even some here in that corner. All right, that's not bad. It's a subtle effect, but one which I kind of like. And uh, yeah, so that's that. So the next thing I want to do is to take care of the clouds first. What I want to do in the clouds is I want to give the impression that they're moving. And for that, I'm going to use a radial blur, right? So I'm going to do another stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E. And I'm going to write down all these kind of shortcuts down in the description. And uh, so what I want to do, now I have that done. I have a new, a new layer. So I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Blur. And I'm going to go to Radial Blur. Okay, so you want to have zoom selected when you do this kind of thing. And now I'm just going to take the center of my blur and put it somewhere, maybe here. Here could work. Let's see what happens. Press OK. Ah, that's not bad at all. So now it looks all a bit kind of weird and wonky. So again, we're going to create a layer mask. Clicking the little Japanese flag down here, inverting that, hiding the effect. Okay, and I'm going to choose a brush with an opacity of maybe 20% and start to brush the effect in wherever I have the feeling I need it, okay? So let's get, now. Well, maybe go even 40% opacity, something like that, okay. Oop, I don't want that to move here, otherwise we're getting some, 
trouble with the end of the image. Okay. Now we're going to zoom in a tiny bit, something like that. Make our brush a bit smaller again, and just continue to brush it in. Hmm. How small do I have to make? Okay, I see. How odd. Ah, that's why it's not doing anything. So remember, if you want to have, if you want to make an effect visible, you have to use white as your color to paint, and not black like me. So you know, may help. So let's just get over that. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do that perfect right now because it's just going to take forever. Make it a bit bigger and go down to 30%. Okay, something like that. Like, like so. All right, and that and X here. Okay, I want it mainly, of course, on the top of the image because that's where the clouds are most visible. <laughs> so, let's do that. All right, and then zoom out and see how it looks. That doesn't actually look bad at all. I kind of like it. Okay, cool. So the next thing is going to be probably sharpening. And then we're going to maybe adjust slightly the colors. And when I say colors, of course, I mean the black and whites because we don't have colors. So sharpening is quite simple. And I'm just going to use a simple high pass sharpening here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E to do another stamp visible. And I'm going to change the blending mode from normal down to soft light. Oops, that was hard light. No. Where is it? Soft light. Okay, so now things look a bit weird, no problem at all. Then we're going to go to Filter, Other, and then High Pass. Okay, and just choose whatever you find appropriate. You can play with that around a little bit. I'm going to go with 1.5 pixels. And once I have done that, I'm going to zoom in to the area I would like to be sharp. Okay, I would like this to be sharp. Yeah, and this kind of stone and stuff. And even, even a little bit too sharp, I wouldn't mind. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to Duplicate that layer as many times as I feel necessary. And every time I duplicate, things will become sharper. Okay. So now I have done it five times, and I think five times should be completely enough. And just to make sure that you can see that, I'm going to group those layers together by hitting Command and G. G. And so here's the before and here's the after. Okay. So you can see that there's quite a bit of sharpening going on. And even brings out some weird white dots on the stones. I like that. I like that feeling a lot, this kind of grainy stuff. So might as well. I, I'm going to keep it. Um, of course, the effect is not every, uh, visible everywhere because we have sharpened everything. And that is not what we want to do. So in order to not do that, we're going to create a layer mask on that group. All right. I'm going to hit B. And uh, now the effect is visible everywhere. So we're going to command invert that. And now with an opacity of 70%, I'm just going to draw the effect in where I want it. Like I said, that stone, this stone, and maybe that stone right here, and this stone right there. Okay. I'm doing that very quick now. Obviously, when you do these kind of things, don't be afraid to take your time. Cool. That looks sweet. Goody. So now we have done that. Now, that is basically the end. And I think in the original one, I had some final ideas about my curves. I'm just going to lower the whole brightness a bit to maybe something like that. And I'm going to invert that because I need that just in the in the stones down here. Maybe down here a bit and here. And theoretically you could put a vignette around it like make it dark around the edges as well. I just don't think that is necessary in that case. So like that a bit darker as well. God, I really need to figure out what are these like squares on my brush. It is horrendous. All right, so that's that. And as a last step, because it was an HDR image, so I actually took three images at different lighting levels, all right? And then I combined them using uh, combined them using photomatics. And if you do that, sometimes photomatics you ha has to align the images, and then you get something like white kind of stuff on the edges. But um, simple, just go there. And then we're going to do another stamp visible with Command, Alt, Shift, and E. I'm actually going to zoom out. I'm going to hit J to get my um, my spot healing brush tool. I'm just going to click down here. Actually, I'm going to go with my opacity high and make that a bit. Oops, wrong one. And make that a bit bigger, something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go up, hold Shift, and just going to go here, which didn't work very much. I'm going to try that again. From here down to here. Why would it not like to do that is the question. Hmm, that was odd. Let's try it again. 
Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So now you see the wide edge has just disappeared. Uh, normally you would try to keep as much to the edge as you can when you do these kind of things, but okay, what ifs. So now we're going to do the same thing right here. I'm just going to go here, and it's going to think for a second, then the wide edge disappears again. God, I love that tool. Can't even say it. Okay, and we can do the same thing up here as well. If the edge is that small, I mean, oh, of course you could crop in if you wanted to, but uh, in that case there is no need to do that. Even though I think, now that I mentioned it, I'm going to crop it a little bit just on that side right here. So maybe something like that, which seems right to me. Uh, yeah, by the way, the crop tool, cropping, C for cropping, so just hit C on your keyboard. It'll bring up the crop tool, and then you can crop it in. And that's it, guys. That's how I basically made that image. After, of course, putting these stones on top of each other for about one and a half hours. It was great fun. On a windy Irish coast. Great fun. Great. Okay, so there you go with the original version. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do not forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, we have done tons today. There were loads of really kind of simple techniques, but, you know, accumulated they are kind of difficult. So we had uh, normal blurring, we had radial blurring, we had sharpening, we had playing with levels and curves. Oh my god, there was a lot in here. So as I said, if you like it, please subscribe. You're going to really help me out. Uh, thanks for watching otherwise, and I shall see you the next time. And don't forget to get out there and take some pictures yourself. Bye, guys.